Okay, so the recording has started and we can begin. So let us continue uh, with what we left in the previous interaction. So I hope till this part you have understood uh, whatever we have discussed. So now, this term, this term is the shear strength. Shear strength. And uh, this term is the shear stress. So whenever we do an analysis, we do it for the equilibrium condition. And so we have to equate shear strength equal to shear stress. So let's do that. You write down the equation, shear strength equal to shear stress. So what do we get? So we get this. Okay. So after getting this, uh, what will be the uh, like factor of safety? Factor of safety. So you see, uh, factor of safety is what? Uh, applied force. Applied force by mobilized force. Okay, mobilized strength. Okay, mobilized strength. So, and whatever stress is, uh, sorry, not applied force, is the capacity, total capacity. Total capacity of taking load by mobilized strength. So, your capacity is this one. And mobilized strength is whatever is being applied to you. Okay, if you uh, if 50 kg load is applied to you, you will mobilize only that strength of 50 kg to lift it up, isn't it? So mobilized strength is nothing but the applied stress, and capacity is the total total value of load that it, it can take. So let us uh, divide it now. So cos cos will get uh, one cos in the denominator will get cancelled, and here also like uh, like we can simplify uh, a little bit more. So let me do it here. It will ultimately become if you keep on simplifying. Like this, you will get. So, ultimately, uh, in the denominator, there will be a 10 term that will come. Okay. 
okay so this is the ultimate uh, equation that you need to remember now uh, what will happen if the water level rises to the top okay i will show you the diagram at this place the water level was at the intermediate location isn't it now what will happen if the water table I'll show you totally rises to the top instead of here it rises to the top like this so in that case the height will be equal to z i did not have enough space so i'm writing it here height is equal to z isn't it h equal to z height of water equal to depth of the slope that we are analyzing so we can also write for that situation like i can write one uh, if water table rises to the surface it should be water table rises to the surface then ultimately then h equal to z then what will be this new fos fos okay new what will be the new one here h and z will get cancelled because h and z is equal so ultimately this will be the term if water table rises to the surface okay i hope you were clear with it now uh, you can simplify if you have any doubt at any point please ask i can clear it now now this term within bracket you can simplify it a bit more okay so let me do it let me do it for the water table rising to the surface criteria when water table is rising to the surface let me do it for that so fos fos already know if i within the bracket if i take common this gamma so it will be gamma minus gamma water okay so 10 phi dash by 10 beta So ultimately, this minus this is equal to gamma submerged. Okay, so this is like one, uh, we can say special condition. Okay, when water table is rising to the surface, H equal to Z, water table is rising. So this is one special condition. Okay, otherwise in general, in general, uh, the main equation will be this one in general because there will not be a situation every time where water table will rise to the surface so in general this is the most important formula this is the universal formula from this formula you can derive it for any of the like uh, um, any of the conditions okay and uh, like in the previous situation also in the previous situation where we did not consider the water table okay what was the what was the factor of safety in the previous condition where there is no uh, no water table the factor of safety that we got was 10 phi dash by 10 beta isn't it so same we can get okay if there is no water then h equal to zero h is zero so water is not there so if i put h equal to zero in the universal equation okay this one 
it, here h equal to zero in this universal equation, what do we get? Ultimately, we get the same equation. Let me show it here itself. So ultimately, you get this whole term 1 minus 0, it becomes 1 minus 0, cos beta 10 phi dash by sine beta, 10 phi dash by sine beta. So ultimately, sine beta by cos beta is 10 beta. So 10 phi dash by 10 beta. So, so we can derive all the all the conditions uh, from this universal equation. So you should remember this universal equation. Okay, uh, this one is the equation. So please try to remember it. You can derive the, all the conditions from here. Okay, so I hope you are clear with what I have discussed till now. Now, uh, let's talk for a, uh, let's talk about one method which is called as friction circle method. Okay, let's talk about one method which is called as friction circle method. So I'll write it down. The slopes that the analysis that we have done for finite slopes were what? Swedish circle method, method of slices. Okay, so there is one more which is called as the friction circle method. Okay, and uh, I thought of discussing it at the end, uh, not in, in between, uh, because this requires a little bit of. Uh, a different point of view. Okay, uh, it's uh, the analysis is a little bit different from the previous analysis. So let us begin. So write down friction circle method. Now, I have already told you uh, that there is one equation for shear strength that you need to uh, remember, which is shear strength is equal to uh, C plus C plus sigma 10 phi. Okay, so uh, you have to remember that generally for if if there is a cohesionless soil given to you then c will be there if there is no cohesion uh, if if there is a cohesive soil then c will be given okay and if there is a soil which is sandy which is uh, not cohesive then this term will become zero okay so now uh, then uh, one, one more thing that you need to revise is factor of safety is equal to 10 phi by 10 beta. Why I am not using 10 phi dash here? Because friction circle will be generally done for C phi soil. C phi soil means clay soil. C means clay. And uh, in clay soil, if there is a clay soil here, the, if there is some load or uh, there is some stress, then water will not go out instantly. Water will remain inside for a certain duration. It will go slowly, but not instantly. So since water will not go out at the instant of application of the load, that's why effective stress will not be used. Okay. Uh, in the sandy situation, what was there? In the sandy situation, we use the effective stress term because 
whenever you apply a load, all the water will go out instantly. And we knew that sigma is equal to sigma bar plus u in sand. So when you apply the load, all the water instantly goes out. So u becomes zero. No water, no u. So this stress becomes effective stress. But in clay, in clay, if there is a clay, water will not go out. Okay, if you apply some stress, it will not go out instantly. So total stress is equal to effective stress plus u. So you will be remaining there for at least some time. So the whole load will not become effective stress. So that's why we do not use the effective stress phenomena. Uh, uh, effective stress terms here like phi dash, sigma, uh, uh, like sigma bar, we don't use it in clay, only we use it in sand. So, like I just wanted to discuss it like a revision. Now, let us uh, go in details of this what is this friction circle method is all about. So what happens is in the friction circle method, if there is a slope, the slope is there. Okay, and let me draw a failure surface. failure surface now we know that this surface failure surface is a part of a bigger circle this failure surface is a part of a bigger circle so i'll not draw the whole circle let me just erase the heading so it's like a part of a bigger circle so this circle will have a center like this. Okay, somewhere like this. Let me place it a little bit here. Somewhere here. Then from this circle, we have to, from this, not a circle, it's a center of the circle. And from this center, we have to draw uh, from this center, we have to draw a circle, a small circle like this. Okay, and the radius of this circle will be with this one. Phi m is the mobilized angle of friction. Okay, uh, we have already discussed about this one because you see uh, earlier we have discussed 10 phi, de, 10 phi by 10 beta, 10 phi days by 10 beta and all. So phi represents the full, uh, like full capacity. Okay, suppose 35 degree. So the slope can go up to 35 degree, but beta is suppose the present value 24 degree. Okay, so the slope is stable and beta, if it is presently 24 degree, then the mobilized value of phi will be also 24 degree. The full capacity of 35 degree is not used. Okay, so present slope will be 24 uh, degree and uh, phi will utilize only 24 degree out of its full capacity of 35 degree. So this beta will be equal to the mobilized friction uh, angle of internal friction. So this we have uh, discussed previously also. Now, from here, we have to like uh, go to the most important point. Okay, the most important point from here is that you have to draw a radius. Wait. 
you have to draw a radius like this then uh, this manner then from here from this point you have to draw a tangent which will go like this you have to draw a tangent which will go like this the line got bent a little bit Okay, now here uh, you have to draw a chord joining these points B, B, and C. Okay, so this is the length of the chord LC. Okay, now uh, First thing is that you have to draw a line from this uh, center of the center of the circle. This is called as the friction circle, actually. Friction circle, friction circle, because this circle radius has the the formula for the radius of this circle has the term angle of internal friction in it. That's why it is generally called as the friction circle okay so we have to first draw it in this manner then there will be a term of uh, weight okay now you see uh, this line this line this line generally refers to the normal reaction okay this line generally refers to the normal reaction of the two layers that means like this layer and this layer if you understand what i am saying this layer is breaking isn't it this layer is breaking and this layer is intact this layer is intact there are two layers isn't it so in uh, there is a boundary here this one this one is the boundary but among along this boundary there is a normal force Okay, normal force, whenever you keep something above something, there is some normal force that is generated, right? So that is the same normal force that I am talking about. And the direction of this normal force will be counted in this manner, to the tangent of the friction circle. Direction of this normal force will be considered as this line. normal force between the part that is breaking off to the part below which is intact okay so that is first of all the normal force then there is this soil mass that is breaking off that means this soil mass it has some weight and i have already told you that since there is no external force here so this uh, this weight is the only force that is doing the disturbance okay uh, so where is the weight where will the location of the weight fall okay so the weight will, is considered generally somewhere here okay and obviously the weight will fall vertically so let me consider this as w so weight is generally uh, in the in this diagram it is considered to be somewhere concentrating here cz okay the center of gravity through which the weight falls if there is a sample its weight will fall through the cz right so, uh, so the center of gravity will be con is considered generally around this part and 
so we have if you concentrate on this p and w we are getting some some vectors uh, like stuff okay we are getting some stuff stuff which is like a vector if you just observe it closely so now this vectors there is another vector this one is the normal this one is the weight normal force weight and another vector is there which is the cohesion so you see as i have already told you that the cohesion is uh, acting along the surface of the failure plane so this cohesion will have some resultant isn't it uh, if i'm just showing it to you in another screen sweet if there is some force which is going on like this so this force will have some resultant right in this manner in this manner this will be the resultant of this force so this force if i like use this force this will be nothing but the cohesion total cohesion okay so this cohesion generally x um, you see the vector we can change the location okay a little bit so the direction we can place it anywhere so this cohesion will be acting somewhere here overall cohesion okay so ultimately if you observe this triangle this dark triangle so this is the cohesion this is the normal force like that okay so this is the triangle that we get okay so uh, uh, for the time being what i will do is you please uh, try to if you have any book i recommend that you you buy you have bought uh, some books for yourself till now so you can go either through bc punmia or uh, like uh, gopal ranjan rao gopal ranjan rao okay any of the books you can take and you please go through the friction circle once okay also go through the theories that we have discussed in the previous classes okay and till this part only okay whatever we have discussed for the friction circle just till this part you try to do a revision okay till till this part you do a revision then we can complete it easily in the next interaction i hope i am I, I was thinking of uploading a video on day five but somehow like there were some problems and i could not upload it and the video was also like it got it did not get even generated I was I was waiting for it to get generated, but it did not get generated. I don't know how it uh, it failed to get generated. But uh, today I have enough time. I can upload uh, a pre-recorded video, and I will. Uh, I hope to complete this friction circle method in the pre-recorded video. Nothing much is there. First, if you understand how to. Uh, if you are, if you are understanding the location of the forces okay and the construction of the friction circle then almost 65 70% of your job is done then i can assure you so try to understand it see your see your books if you have any problem i will complete it in the pre recorded video and in the next interaction i will uh, if you have any doubt I will also spend some time in clearance of the doubts and then we will go to um, a very important topic of soil which is called as shear strength.
okay we will discuss shear strength shear strength then uh, we will discuss various tests that are used uh, for determining the quality of soil okay basically the strength tests okay triaxial test then unconfined compression all those we will discuss so friction circle home maximum one or two videos will end this stability of slopes chapter we are already at the end and uh, then we can go to much important topics okay and uh, like those are not in higher semesters but still we will go through it this time okay I will, let's go a bit uh, let's get a little bit advanced uh, in this semester itself so thank you very much thank you for your time any doubt you can ask or else you can leave no problem